In this video, I'm going to describe the linear probability model and I'm going to explain a little bit about how it works. So to begin with, we're going to assume that we have a dependent variable y and it's given by beta naught plus beta 1 times some explanatory variable x plus some sort of error term, epsilon, where this epsilon, as we normally assume, is iid with a mean of 0 and a variance of sigma squared where iid here means that the errors are independent of one another and that they are identically distributed. Okay, the difference with this particular model opposed to those which we've currently spoken about is that the dependent variable here is going to be a binary variable. So it's going to take on a value of 1 if something occurs and 0 otherwise. So the dependent variable here could be representing whether or not an individual goes to college. So it takes on a value of 1 if they go to college, and it takes on a value of 0 otherwise. So to analyse this model, we're going to start off by looking at the conditional expectation of our dependent variable, given that we have our independent variable x. But we know for the discrete random variable case that this is just a sum over, or weighted sum rather, of the probabilities times the values which that particular variable takes on. So it's a sum over i times the probability that y equals a particular value of y by i times that particular value of y, which I'm representing here by this yi term here. And for the case where our dependent variable just takes on two values, a 0 or 1, this is given by the probability that y equals 0, given we have x, times 0 plus the probability that y equals 1 given x times 1. And it's quite easy to see that this first term is just going to disappear because we're multiplying it by 0. Hence, we're going to be left that, that the conditional expectation of y given x is just going to be equal to the probability that y equals 1 given we have x. Okay, so let's use this to describe this above model here. So first of all, let's start off by taking the expectation of y given we have our independent variable x. Well, from the above model, that's just going to be equal to beta naught plus beta 1 times x. And the expectation of this error term, given that we have x or otherwise, is just going to be 0. So that last term disappears. But we know that this is equal to the probability that y equals 1, given we have x. OK, so we know that these coefficients and the explanatory factor x have something to do with probabilities. But what is the explicit meaning of these coefficients, in this case beta 1? Well, to think about that, what we're going to do is we're going to think about what would be the change in probability or in this case the probability that y equals 1 given x, associated with a change from x to x plus 1. Well, it's not hard to see that if we just increment x by 1, then the probability is just going to go up by a factor of beta 1. So beta 1 here actually represents the change in probability which would be associated with a one unit change in that particular explanatory factor. So what does beta naught mean in this context? Beta naught, well, if you'd imagine that x was zero, so this second term would then disappear, then that would represent the probability that y equals one given x equals zero. So the probability that y equals one given x is zero would be given by beta naught. So it's not hard to imagine how these, this sort of model extends to the example where you have multiple explanatory factors. Essentially, each of the coefficients would then just represent the increment in probability associated with an increment in that particular explanatory factor holding all other explanatory factors constant. 